In this video, we're going to talk about some of the finishing touches on the Ferrari 308. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to dive back into the Ferrari 308. When I ended the series, I showed and shared a model that had a bunch of different features on it. Things like this side scoop, we had door jams and uh, hood gaps and, and headlights and so on. And all of these things are just details that I didn't feel like we really wanted to go into because honestly, they take a ton of time. Now in the 911 series that I did, I did go all the way through doing all of the detail work. So if you do want to follow along and do all of the detail work, the appearances, the renders, that 911 series has it all. And it was kind of meant to, to be that from the start. The Ferrari 308 was really meant to talk about how to create the body shape, just the main shape of the body, because that's the most difficult part. All the little details, they generally just take a lot of time, but they're not inherently complex like it is in creating the body. So if you want to download this from the description of the video, this was the last version of the body that I shared before the bonus version. So what I want to talk about is the way in which we use surfacing tools to create the side scoop. Now that was the question that came across in somebody that's been following along. So I do want to make sure that we at least address it. So in this design, there are two form bodies, the, the main body and then this side scoop that I made. Now this was just a cylinder and I just sort of made the shape look approximately like what the intake scoop looks like on the door. And really all I did here was I tried to make sure the interaction or the intersection between those is about where it would be on the actual car. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, why didn't you just do it as part of the form body? Well, the faces that we have on the side of this car are really big and broad. The curvature is very gradual. There's not any, any drastic changes. And in order to incorporate something like this into that form body would be pretty hard. Now it would, it's possible. I mean, it's definitely possible, but one thing that we know with forms is the more detail you add, the harder it is to control the curvature. So we like to keep the forms generally pretty broad and basic if we can and avoid putting too much detail. On most cars, the tricky parts are going to be the transition around the wheel wells and the transition to the windshield and the A-pillar and areas like that. So uh, on this car, again, I'm not gonna get into all of that, but I do wanna talk about how I got the intake scoop on the side of the car. So again, you can download this from the description of the video. This form body was made months ago. I think it was December of last year. So if you make any changes to the form body, you'll likely be prompted to uh, to update the T-spline body. But in this case, we're just gonna finish the form and we should have it convert. Now, you'll notice that this gives me an error with the split face, but let's go ahead and let's not worry about that. Let's just take a look at this feature here. So we've got the red body and this is the, uh, the car body, obviously 190 individual faces that are all stitched together as one form body. And then we've got the intake scoop. Now there are a couple different tools that we can use to do this. Now, it depends on your geometry. It depends on if you had any issues creating that geometry. So we're gonna approach this with the trim tool first. And if that doesn't work, we'll go into the split face and split body tools. So the trim tool allows us to select a surface as a trim tool. Now you have to be careful with this because you'll notice that it's trying to select individual faces. And what we want is we want the entire body as our trim tool. And then, there's no other selection in the dialog box, but what you need to know is that you just kind of have to rotate this around and select the area that you want to remove. So you can see it turns red and that's going to be the area outside of the car body. So I'm going to say, okay, and then I'm going to repeat that process. Now there are other CAD programs that have what's called a mutual trim. that lets you pick a bunch of surfaces at the same time, and then you can pick the areas that you want to keep or remove. Now, Fusion does have something like that called boundary fill, but boundary fill is intended to make a closed solid volume and not just surfaces. So we don't quite have that tool, so you have to do it a couple different times. So we're gonna trim this time. The trim tool is going to be that, and it's our intake scoop. And then we wanna select the area inside. Now, this is where it gets tricky because Fusion, I found, does not really like the selection process, especially when you're hovering over the surface inside. So you might, find that you need to do this a couple different times. You might need to rotate it around and then select inside of here. 
And if you find that this is problematic, which obviously it's, it's happening right now, then sometimes you can go back to the previous trim. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that previous trim. And I'm gonna repeat it, but first I wanna trim away the car. So my trim tool is going to be that body, and then the car piece is gonna be this inside piece. And you can see again, it's just causing all sorts of problems. So the solution to this, if this happens to you and it doesn't work, the solution to this is going to be to go to modify and either split face or split body. We're gonna try split body first. So the bodies to split will be the car body to start, and the splitting tool or tools will be the surface. We can extend it if it doesn't cut through the body, but obviously this one does, so we can just say okay. Now, you'll notice that this opens up a couple of, it basically creates another surface. If I hide the car body and I hide the intake scoop, what we're left with here is that inside piece, which we don't need. So we can take a look and now the intake scoop portion is cut out of the car, but we still need this piece in there. So what we're going to do is repeat that. We can do split body. Again, split face works, but then you just have to select the faces and delete them. So the bodies to split, this is going to be our intake scoop. The splitting tool is gonna be the car body. And we're gonna say, okay. And now if we hide the car body, what we're left with is the, the intake scoop piece we want, and then this little piece that we don't want. So now these two pieces can be removed. I'm gonna right click and select remove. Bring back the car body and bring back that intake scoop. So that's the basic process used to create that intake scoop on the car. From here, what I would do is stitch them together, just select them, and you should see a green edge all the way around. If you don't, then you might need to play around with the tolerances. But note that when you do that, Fusion is going to take some liberties in adjusting the, the shape where the intersection is. So in this case, we're gonna say okay. And now if you want, you can come back and apply something like a small fillet to that edge. It's gonna to have to be pretty small, um, partially because if we try to do a large fillet like this, 10 millimeters, it doesn't look right. Um, now you can do something like a variable fillet. So down here we can do variable and we can have a smaller fillet on these back edges. So this might be one millimeter back here and the other point might be one millimeter. And then maybe this point over here is 10 millimeters. And what that allows us to do is have a smoother transition out here and a smaller one here. Now, if I am going to model something like this for my own use, let's say that I was going to try to produce a part, then I typically wouldn't use a fillet. I would typically split the surfaces and I would blend them together with something like loft or patch. Uh, as I mentioned in other videos, I'm not super pleased with the surfacing tools in Fusion at this time. There are some Problems, they work in a lot of cases, but in some cases they, they do produce problems that you just can't work around. So uh, in this case, a, a fillet works fine, especially since we're just making a visual reference. I do wanna note a couple other things that I did to this car after the fact. Uh, now, as I mentioned in the bonus video, I did things like these, these gaps. And essentially what you do is you split the face and then you trim and offset. So that is one way that you can do it. And having a small gap there is going to look a little bit more realistic uh, than just splitting the face and changing it to say a different color, a darker color. But it kind of just depends on how much time you want to spend. This can take a good bit of time, especially because it's rolling around in interesting areas. So you have to really play around the surfaces in order to get that to work. The general process is going to be to create a sketch, and I'm just gonna do a simple one here. Let's say that we wanted to um, have like a, uh, let's just put like a, a gas filler door or something. Now I know that there's not one on the car right here, but uh, just so we can see how that works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just create two circles and then I'm gonna go to modify and split face. And this is the, these are the faces to split and the splitting tools will be these two sketches. Now you'll notice that it's not letting me do both. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and do one, and I'm going to repeat that process. So I'm going to bring the sketch back, and once again, I'm going to do split face. Now the faces to split are on the inside, and the tool is going to be that inside piece. You could also extrude those as, uh, as surfaces and then just use the surface to split it. But now what we can do is we can take these faces, and we can use our appearance tool, so A on the keyboard, and I can give it a darker appearance to, to sort of give it the appearance that there is a seam there. So if I drag this, uh, sorry, we wanna, 
make sure that we're on the face option. So if you drag this, you can select individual faces. And then I'm going to edit this and just make it a bit darker. So still red, but just kind of giving the appearance that it's a darker red. So when you render something like that uh, from afar, it'll look like there is some sort of division right there. So again, if I go to the render workspace and we kind of look at an in canvas render, uh, it's going to kind of appear like there's something there, but of course it's, it's not realistic because there's not an actual gap. Now, if you want to make a gap, the way that I would typically do this because of the curvature, uh, I would typically come in and say, create an offset of that face. So we're going to just turn off chain selection and we want to just pick the faces that we're interested in. Now here's the trick is we don't want to actually offset it. We just want to create it. And then we're going to use move copy, which is M on the keyboard, or you can come here. And what we want to do is we want to move that just back a small amount. I'm going to say minus five millimeters, just so it's apparent. And then we're going to come in, we're going to select these faces and we're going to delete them. So delete on the keyboard or you can use modify and delete, same thing. And now you can see that we've got that, that sort of recess there. Now this is obviously exaggerated. I, I put a really big gap between these two so we could see them. And now from this point, you could either create a ruled surface going toward a direction or you can create a loft going between these outside edges and going to these inside edges. Now it's going to give me an error until I select everything, but you can see there now we've got that. And you have to repeat it on the inside. And again, this is exactly why I didn't want to cover this in the video because this step takes a lot of time. So when you're trying to create a car like this and you're trying to detail it for, for renders or for whatever reason, then you end up spending a lot of time on these little details. Uh, you know, so in the Porsche 911 series, we did, uh, I think it was 10 and a half or 11 hours, six and a half to seven hours of that was in the body because it took a lot of time in understanding the concepts. And the rest of the time was in detailing it. And that car didn't have a ton of details. It was very much just a visual reference. So um, keep in mind that you just, you have to, to really dedicate a lot of time to making these things look kind of realistic. So on the bonus, and this will be linked in the description as well, you can download this one. So on the bonus, again, I, I did things like I made some, some fake louvers in the back for so, some of the venting for the motor and on the side, and they're not real vents, they're just, again, they're just kind of faked. And these took an unreasonable amount of time. They took way too long. And you can see on the back here, I did that fake split instead of doing an actual gap. But on the doors, I did the, the actual gap. And mainly because when doing renders, I thought that I would probably see it from this angle where the gap in the door would be more apparent, but the gap back here probably wouldn't be, especially if you're looking at it from say the top, then you're not really going to notice that this is just a different colored face as opposed to a gap. But if you're looking at the front and you're looking at the hood, you would notice that that is not a recess or a gap. And again, these are all faked anyways. So, um, you know, to, you, you can take it for whatever, whatever you want, but that's just kind of the decisions you have to make when you're detailing a car or when you're detailing a model, if it's just a render and you can sort of get away with kind of making, you know, some of these fake features, then you're going to save yourself a lot of time. If you go to the process of actually making all of the high-end details, uh, then it's it's really just going to take a lot of time to do. Now, one of the car models that I've been working on, uh, which I've showed I'm, I'm working on in Blender, I probably have 200 hours in that model, uh, and it's nowhere close to being done. So, again, it, it kind of just depends on what your end use is. If you're if you're doing it for fun, if you're doing it for um, just practice, then kind of faking some of these things can save a lot of time. You can spend 10 hours on something instead of 100 hours on something. So just keep that in mind that there is a some diminishing returns that you're going to run into with detailing models like this. But at this point, I think or I hope that at least covers all the little bits that are needed to finish that side scoop and maybe detail some of the, the door gaps and seams and things like that. If there are any more questions, obviously, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.